morning. God bless you. I, I know it's a, a blessed day, not because things are okay, but blessed because God is with us. Uh, and, and I know that at this time I can hear the, the rain coming, but I think it's more of the presence of God that we enjoy at this time. And so as we start the, the day or this, this morning with, with a prayer of thanksgiving, knowing that He is with us, uh, we will also start to think, uh, today is November 1, and a lot of people say, Happy Halloween. I, I'm sorry to say, but, uh, you know, I'm not too happy about the Halloween, uh, because for several things, one, we have the storm that's coming in a few hours, and it's already hit uh, uh, Sorsogon and, and Catanduanes, and I'm sure a lot of our countrymen have experienced the brunt of its fierce winds. And, and yet I say, it's a blessed Sunday, and yet it is not also a happy Halloween. Uh, maybe I can start to say, uh, just a form of trivia, do you know what undas is? We think undas is a Tagalog word. But in, in truth, undas is uh, an acronym of a Spanish phrase. And, and in, in Spanish, it is, Una dia para todas las almas y santos. That's the whole meaning. So you see that, Una dia para todas las almas y E Santos. And you start to think about it, where did we get that? Uh, well, it started really way back in the 6th century when there was the emperor of uh, the Byzantine, Byzantinian uh, Empire and um, he, he had a wonderful wife. But the wife, though godly, died and he wanted to commemorate and make her uh, and, and put up an edifice, a church, so to speak. But the authorities and the people didn't like it. And so what he did is he marked this particular day and he said, it's going to be November 1 and I'm going to say it's going to be the feast, the feast of martyrs. Because in a way, she, he wanted to commemorate his wife. And so this is the beginning of how uh, just a wish of an emperor to pay homage to his godly wife. And then it continued and evolved and eventually uh, in the time of the Celts, which is way back in 2000 plus, you know, the Celts had this particular feast. Uh, they call it uh, the Sawin. Sawin, which meant uh, really the, the festivity of ushering the winter season. It was the end of summer, and it was the beginning of winter, which really depicted a gloomy, dark, cold winter. As a matter of fact, it is also commem commemorated or saying as the time of the beginning of human death. So if you think about it, really, uh, all Souls Day and All Saints Day, it has just been derived from a very paganistic uh, tradition and uh, very whimsical, if I may use that word. And, and yet, we have one way or the other Christianized it. And, and yet, if we start to think about it, it is true that today we experience death. It is not only because we commemorate these particular days, but we also say, yes, death has its uh, specter so to speak, that is always showing its ugly face, especially now in the COVID. And here we are in the middle of a storm. We also see and experience such a kind of picture of how a specter comes, looming like a thief, about to pray and take possession of one's life. But I would like to stretch this even further, especially during these times. Um, you know, there was a, a, a study made by it's literally a survey coming from Google, Google Trends. And that during the time of the pandemic, you start to see the spiking of uh, a lot of interests. One, the interest on God. Second was the interest on Jesus. But uh, surprisingly, there were two lines at the bottom that were bottom dwellers, if we may use that word. And that was Christianity and church. And, you know, it is a very sad picture. It paints a very sad picture that in the time when everything needs to be enlightened and things have to be clarified, it seems that church and Christianity is not to be found. And it's a sad state of what it means that today the impact and the influence of the church and Christianity is not as profound as people seeking God and Jesus. And even faith is above, above the charts, but in terms of church and Christianity, it is not to be found. And if you look about and you think about it, it is true. 
uh, people have, one way or the other, there is death not only physical because of the COVID, not because of only the storm, but the death of values, e e even the death of truth. And the church, one way or the other, has not been able to come across. And that's the reason why we feel like we continue as to how God has been pursuing the world. We went back in months back and we started to see that how God is pursuing the world through the Old Testament. But now we ask ourselves, is God pursuing us today in this present time? I believe so. I believe so. I think God is still pursuing us. And, and how can he pursue the world? It is through us. Yes, I think it is a challenge. That's the reason why I'm starting this series, because this is a challenge for you and for me. Because as we are in the bottom dwellers of really of surveys done by Google Trends, I think it is time for us now to start to say, I have to come up for God. I have to show up. But for me to be able to do that, I have to understand what Jesus was trying and intended when he was here as to how he wants the church to really come alive, so to speak, to come and become resuscitated from its sleeping in a way of, shall we say, lackadaisical, uh, uh, lukewarm approach as it faces the challenges of today. And so let us entitle our study today as Building Life in the midst of death. Building life. Chapter in Matthew. And uh, this, this particular verse or verses of scripture is quite known to us. And yet I'll be using this particular verse or verses. And then I'll be switching to Mark and to Luke. Which has, uh, they have the similar, similar passages to follow. And so, may, will you please turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16? After which we're going to pray. Mark, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. I'll begin. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say, John the Baptist. Others say, Elijah. Still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? Who do you say I am? Jesus replied, and then, sorry, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Uh, similarly, you'll find that uh, scripture in Mark chapter 8, verses 17 to uh, 27 to 30, and also in Luke chapter 9, starting from verse 18 to 27. Now, I will not give you immediately the three points that I have in mind, but I want to build up sim simply from the text and from there draw what uh, Jesus is trying to share with us as a church that we become relevant, really the answer to the time when death seems to be around, when it seems like everything seems to be bleak, where we have lost values, we have lost truth, and even the life that we have. And so, again, let's go back to Matthew chapter 16. And it says here, And Jesus went to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked, who do you say I am? The first thing that I want you to understand is, where is this region? Where is Caesarea Philippi? Caesarea Philippi is uh, it's in the foot, really, on the foot of Mount Hermon. As he was, Jesus was going to Jerusalem, again, he was going to Jerusalem for his final days where he's going to have this last supper. So now he passes through Caesarea Philippi. 
Now, wh why did he choose that? You see, in Caesarea Philippi, it was very well known to be to be have been Hellenized in terms of its religious paganism or practices. A, a lot of religious practices that have been done there. As a matter of fact, if I may draw the picture, uh, imagine this is Mount Hermon. Uh, just imagine this is Mount Hermon. On the base of Mount Hermon, there was a particular temple, and that was the temple of Pan. Now, who is Pan? Pan was the god. He was the god of fertility because as you see in the picture, again, if we may see that big picture that is shown to you, that you will see there's like a cave, a mouth of the cave. Presuming this is the mouth of the cave. There, there it is. And so uh, during that time, water was gushing out. It was coming out. And it was filling like a tributary to all the parts of the Jordan River. And so a lot of people felt that this was really the, the, the place for fertility, but it was also a place of desolation. You see, it's dark. And why? Because it's a picture of darkness. They say that is the mouth of Hades. So now, if you're going to think, here's Jesus, who is now asking, Peter, who do you think I am? And if you can see yourself, if I am Peter, okay, if I'm Peter, and this is the mouth of Hermon or Pan, and you are Jesus facing me, and you ask me the question, Peter, who do you say I am? You are the Christ. And Jesus now says, and upon you, Peter, I shall, and upon you, the rock. He is now pointing referring, reference to me and also to the, to the cave where the water was coming out. He was saying now, listen, listen, upon you and that rock, I will build my church. You see, it is such a beautiful imagery of how Jesus was trying to create and teach a very powerful message. He was saying, now, Peter, because you know I am the Christ, you know I am the Messiah. You see, Christ means in Greek, the anointed one. And in Hebrew, uh, Christ means Messiah. And so now G Peter says, you are the anointed one, anointed one as the king, and you are the Messiah, the redeemer. And so now Jesus says, and because of this, uh, Peter, you are blessed because the Father has blessed you with wisdom that you recognize me as the Messiah. Now, upon you, Peter, because you're going to preach this in Acts chapter 2, but also upon this truth, it doesn't matter if it comes from the gates of Hades, because he's saying now, I have the greatest power to build my church in you and in any other place in the world. Even in the very pit of the enemy of heathens, heathenness, even in the, in the dung of man, even in the, in the darkness of man, even in the midst of COVID, especially in the midst of COVID, even in the time when there is a storm, that is the time that my church must really trumpet that Jesus, you are the Messiah, that you can come and be by my side. And that's the reason why it is so important when we start to see this, because the message that Jesus is giving to us is God can build his church, his kingdom anywhere. God is not limited. Jesus does not need a very nice place to build his church. He can build his church, his kingdom, anywhere. He can build it in the streets. He can build it in the church. He can build it in the hospital. He can build his kingdom anywhere, especially to the person who believes that he is the Messiah. Can you imagine, he said, even the gates of Hades. Now, what is a gate? Gate symbolizes dominion. Gate means power. Even in the dominion of who? Of Hades. Who was Hades? Hades is the god of the afterlife. Because he was saying, remember, I will also defeat the afterlife. Because I will resurrect again. And so he is now saying, Peter, 
this truth that I am the Messiah, I am now saying I will build a church with that truth. But at the same time, that truth will also beat and also be able to defeat the gates, the dominion of Hades, of desolation, of death, because I am the life. Can you imagine the power that Jesus is now giving to his apostles? He is now giving this wonderful conviction and assurance. I will champion the victory of God anywhere, anytime, any place, in any given situation, because I am the Messiah, the living God. It is so wonderful. It's a beautiful message. And this is the reason why here we as as Christ followers, as church, we can now say that God can build this kingdom. I don't have to wait for a, a, it's an evangelist. I do not have to wait for a great teacher. God is saying, I can use you. As you know that I am the Messiah, as if you know that I am the truth, if you know I'm the victor, you know that I have conquered everything, even Hades itself, then you can be the key. You are also part of the church that I can revive and, and bring about a broken world into life. This is the message that we have to give today. This is the message when people now are saying, it's gloomy, it's dark, it's stormy. Yes, but in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of a storm, Jesus can still be God if we will just call on Him as our Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One. And it's a, such a beautiful, simple, and yet uh, profound message that Jesus gives us today. What about you today? Are you in a desolate place? Do you feel like you're now probably in the middle of a, inside a cave, overwhelmed by darkness? But let's not wait for, for people to, to call, even now. If you feel like you feel alone, God is, God, our, our Jesus is saying, I can be there for you. I can be the Christ for you. Even in a broken relationship. Maybe in the midst of a lost job. Maybe you're wondering, Lord, how can I survive? Here is a storm. Here is the COVID. I've lost my job. God, be there for me. And I'll tell you one thing. Jesus can be there the time you call him. He can be any. He's the Messiah of any given time, space, world. It doesn't matter because he is God of all. And that's the reason why today I am not to fear. Sure, there's going to be a 215 kilometer wind that's going to come. I'm not saying God will just protect me. Yes, he will. But whatever happens, he is in charge. He is sovereign. He is mighty. He is glorious. No matter what happens, God will always be God. And Jesus will be my Messiah. And that is the message that the world needs. The confidence we know. I'll share further as we talk about the two other points that are crucial as to how we see Christ wanting to share the power and the message that he wants to reach the world through us through us and really blessing the world the second part that we realize or we find out in this particular passage of scripture is this jesus as he was going now to jerusalem uh, i found that really quite impactful you see to us it's it's nothing it's just a place but if you pause for a while what's jerusalem Jerusalem is the city of the king. That's the city of David. That is where you proclaim yourself to be king. And again, it, it is clearly said that here's Jesus in the region of Caesarea Philippi. And if you go up into Mark and also in Luke, you find that he was going to Jerusalem. Now, you remember what Jesus said? Please don't tell anyone. I'll tell you why he said that. So here's the revelation that the Father has given Peter, that he's the Christ, he's the Messiah. Now as a Jew, I'm going to say, wow, I finally have the Messiah. 
we'll finally have redemption. We'll finally see the coming of the throne of David, which is true, because that's a promise. But you see, my concept of throne of David is going to be the earthly monarch. He is going to conquer and he's going to defeat the Romans. And he's going to really emancipate and, and bring about such freedom. But Jesus was saying, wait, wait, you, you got it all wrong. You see, I'm going there. I'm going to claim my crown. But you see, my crown is not the crown made out of gold. The crown that I'll be wearing will be the crown of the cross, of the thorns. My throne will not be the seat of David. It will not be the seat of the emperor. You know, my throne will be the cross. I'm having goosebumps, I'm saying this. He's saying, my throne is not what you picture. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm going to bring victory to you, but not in the way you say that I'm going to be physically. It's going to be an economic in a way that is going to be well, glorious for Israel again. No, he's actually saying, I'm giving you much more, something more lasting. You see, even if I become king, and if it's not going to be eternal, it has no effect, it has no power. But what I'm going to give you now is I'm going to embrace the throne. The throne, not the power, the seat of power, but the throne is the cross. And I'm going to embrace that cross for you. I'm going to embrace that cross, that crown I'm going to put on my head. It's not made out of gold. It's made out of thorns. Why am I doing that? Because the, my kingdom is not established in the seat of David, but my kingdom established in the seat of your heart. That is where my kingdom is. You see, the kingdom, if I sit, now, if I sit simply on the seat of David, it's just there, one. Just a local place. That's one. That's just Jerusalem. But I want my kingdom everywhere. A kingdom that is beyond all ethnicity. A kingdom beyond all culture. A kingdom beyond all boundaries. And the kingdom is because I establish it. Not through the works of a, a chair, a seat made out of gold and all rubies and diamonds. No, the most beautiful, beautiful throne I will ever have is your heart. And you know what? It will take my life. My life. That's the reason why Jesus said, don't tell anyone. Because people will think, people will say, oh, he's going to sit on the seat of David. We're going to be finally, we're going to be redeemed as a nation. Hallelujah. We're going to be glorious. But Jesus is saying, yes, you're going to be glorious. But you see, my kingdom is always perpetual. It is all time. It is all season. And it's not a kingdom where you just find power all the time. It is really the power knowing that in meekness you have strength. You have the power of God in the midst of what is happening. There is COVID because Jesus is enthroned. You have assurance. You may not have the money. Maybe if the things go around and the roofs fly away, but it doesn't matter. You know what happens? The most important thing is God will take care of me. Even if the house is blown away, I am sure God will provide for me. That is the kingdom that is so sure because he is enthroned, not in Jerusalem. He is enthroned in all our hearts. You see, that's the most beautiful message. That's the message that the world needs. Unfortunately, we give the message, and I'll tell you this, the saddest thing is, and I, can't, I, I, I have to say that again later, you know, the, the prosperity gospel has ruined much of the power of the gospel. There are people say, claim it and you'll have it, and just going to be rich and be without, and you come against all say, Listen, we're all going to die. I'm going to die, but I know my afterlife is secured in Jesus. Not in my arrogance, but because of what Jesus did for me. He's my king, and he's, I, I live in his kingdom, and because of that, I am assured. Suffering is in this world, and this is part of how it means and what it means. 
Jesus was saying, my kingdom will also be built through suffering and rejection. It is not always going to be nice and rosy. But, but you know, we always want to project. Everything is good. You know, everything's good. It's different to be self-assured. It is different also to be so assured by the promises that Jesus will remain king no matter what happens. And that's the reason why to me, Jesus claims his crown only through the cross. Jesus claims his kingdom or his crown and establishes his kingdom only through, through the cross. I'll go to the third, which we have to go to Luke chapter 9, verse, and, and it says here, Jesus, and the third that I want to focus on is, Jesus builds his kingdom, and listen, when we start to build each other. That's the reason why suffering and death, he said, you know, I'm the king. Who do you say I am? Oh, you're the Christ. So I'm your Messiah, yes. So your Messiah, your king, is going now to embrace the cross, yes. Will you embrace your cross? The king, you believe I'm king? Yes. You am the Messiah? Yes. You are the anointed one? Yes. So now, I'm the anointed one, and me being your king, will you follow me? Because if you belong into my kingdom, the king, kingdom rules always follow all its subjects. And the subject is no different from what the king has done. And so now he's the king. He's asking you, if you belong to my kingdom, and I had to suffer rejection and so much pain, are you willing? Oh, hindi naman, Lord. Kaya ka namatay dahil para sa akin. Well, that's true. But I'll tell you this. Suffering also means a time for us to witness who God is. You see, when we go through suffering, and this is what it says here. Allow me. I'm not going to give you something that is not out of the text. It says here again. He says, he further goes on in, in um, um, Matthew, if I may go, verse 24. Jesus said to his disciples, his disciples, his disciples, his disciples, his disciples. No, no, you're not having problem with your video. His disciples means his followers. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And that's very clear. It's, it's, it's so clear. I, no matter how I, I twist it, cannot be twisted. Because anyone who comes after me, if you want to be part of my kingdom, you're going to follow me. You're my disciples. You are my followers. He must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Very clear. Now why? Why is it so important? Because I'll tell you one thing. You see, in the midst of suffering, li listen, that, so how did the church really grow in the times of persecution? Ngayon, ma-persecute ang Kristiyano, parang sa manalubi. Nag-share ka ngayon, tapos rin-reject ka, ayaw mo na. Eh, but that's part of it. You start to share, people would reject it. Hey, uh, don't make any bones about it. Don't make it just such a big fuss. If our Jesus was rejected, listen, Jesus went through the cross, He died, and nobody followed, only after millions and billions. Don't be so egotistical. Na, wag na akong masyadong mayabang na gusto ko pag-share kung gano'n, not no like tas ka ganyan. Hindi, hindi ko trabaho. Yung trabaho ng Diyos yun eh. All I have to do is proclaim Jesus as Messiah in the best way. And that's another story. But what I'm telling you now, as Jesus, He said, who do you think I am? I'm the Christ. Okay, good. So in the same way that you have called me as Messiah, now, as I have lived, so must you. And if I've been denied, I've been rejected, I've been betrayed, so will you be. And most important thing is, when we now, as part of His kingdom, go through this life, as we are being rejected, this is also the time that people will know who Christ is. What do I mean? Let's turn our Bibles, which is good, in Galatians chapter 6. And let me just read for you Galatians chapter 6. 6 starting from verse 1 and 2 brothers and sisters if anyone is caught in sin 
You who live by the Spirit must restore that person gently. Continue. But watch yourself that you may not be tempted. Now listen, listen, listen. Carry each other's burdens. That in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. Carry. You know what's the meaning of carry? Bastadzo. What does the meaning of bastadzo mean? It is the idea of removal. Carry. I let, let me remove. Simon of Cyrene, let me remove the cross and let me carry it for you, Jesus. I'll carry the cross so that in your burden, I will be able to help you. In the same light, you see, people, the world is watching. Do Christians carry each other's burden? Then, fellow Christians shoot each other. Uh, and, and, but we, we, we are the ones who maim each other. No, the, the gospel is saying here, as you're being denied, as you're being rejected, you have to be there to encourage and say, it's all right. We shall continue. We should, we should cheer each other on to be able now to pursue and do what God has tasked us to do. We are to carry each other's burden to fulfill the law of Christ. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, this is also quite an interesting uh, verse. First Corinthians, second, sorry, Second Corinthians chapter one. Second Corinthians chapter one, and let me read for you, starting from verse three, and it says, "The Father of compassion and the God of all comfort." Now listen, the Father who comforts us in all our troubles. How? Why? So that we can comfort those. In any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God we are to be a comfort to each other we are to be a source we, you know what's the meaning of comfort it is in a way of saying it is a proactive be now it is present and it is continuing paracleso which means it's like paraclete you're to be a, a comforter you're a person who's going to be an assistance to be a guide, to be a support. You see, when we start, and the people who are watching us, they go through, pakita mo itong Christian, ito nagkakaproblema, sila nagtutulungan. Hindi, ngayon nangyari, Christian, nagbabangaan. Eh, paano sila maniniwala? Sabi nga ni Mahatma Gandhi, eh. sabi niya, I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christianity. Eh, that's Gandhi. Gandhi said this. He said, you know, I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christianity. That's what's happening today. See, when, when things are happening and people are looking for answers, they look for Christ, they look for God, there's a spike, and yet the church and its Christianity is really just on the lower portion, not moving. Why? Because people need to see that Christ is truly alive, that He is enthroned in all of us, that we encourage one another, we support one another. Listen, when somebody in church or in the church you're having problems, it's time for you to help. It's not for you, walang bali, wala bala ka dyan. Hindi pwede yun, kasi pang maniniwala ang tao. Ba bakit? Ano nangyari? Nagkakandara pa na yung mga tao? Tulungan mo. Eh, nakakasawa. Eh, si Jesus, nakakasawa. Listen. This, and this is one of my favorites. Here is Judas. From the beginning, Jesus knew he was going to be betrayed. Now, comes now the Lord's Supper. Listen, in the Lord's Supper, they were all together, seated together. And then he broke bread and then he said, the person who is going to betray me must do it now. What did the people do? Atinginan sila. Sino? Ako, Lord? Sino? Sino? Sino, Lord? Sa amin? Nobody knew. You know why? Because Jesus treated Judas the same way he treated everyone. Eh kung tayo mga Kristiyano, dapat ganun din. Magmahalan, magtulungan, na hindi tayo natitingin, parehas ang tingin, dahil nakikita, it is really Christ that we honor when we support, when we comfort, when we carry each other's burden. It is Christ that, that, that is glorified, not us, not Him, not you, 
but it is Christ. And so when we do that, the world, God is able to pursue the world through us because now in the midst of all death and, and loss of faith and trust and, and, and truth, because they see it lived out in all of us, they know who Jesus is. They know who Jesus is. And the last reason why I think it is important that we continue to go through suffering and all of this, and it is again found in First in uh, First Corinthians. I'm sorry, Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Kanina pa ako nakakalat ng mga scripture references, pero alam alam ko naman you'll carry me in or and you'll comfort me. Okay. Now, Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Starting from verse 8. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly at my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. And that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. That's the best message that the world needs. It is not all power, prosperity, blessed na blessed ako, ang dami kong blessing, kaluwa ka, ano, ano, blessed na blessed ako dahil mas kin dumadaan ako ng pagsusubok, hirap na hirap ako, kapit to kulang ako, Jesus. At hindi niya ako pababa, yan ang mensahe na kailangan pakinggan ng mundo. Hindi yung patinikan, hindi yung pagalingan, kundi patapatan. Tapat ako kay Kristo dahil siya lang ang tapat sa akin. Kasi alam ko, pag tapat ang Diyos sa akin, kaya kong sagupahin kahit anong klaseng bagyo. Kaya sa hirap, sa lahat ng pagsusubok, hindi ka kailangan magpanggap na, ah, okay ako, okay ako. Hindi. Dumadaan ako ng pagsusubok, pero hindi ako pinapabayan ng Diyos. Yan ang mensahe. Dumadaan ako ng, ng bagsik, ng tantindi ng mga buhay. Pero alam mo, nandyan ang aking mga kapatid. Tumutulong, gumagabay, lumalakas ako. Dahil sa kanilang pagmamahal, suporta, nakikita ko. Ang kapangyarihan ni Jesus sa akin. Yan ang mensahe na kailangan madinig ng mundo. Hindi, patinigan tayo eh. Pagalingan tayo eh. Hindi masisinda ka mundo dahil mas madaming magagaling kesa sa atin. Pakinggan nyo to. May magagaling pa sa atin dahil mga tao sa mundo matitinig. Pero alam mo paano natin matatalo ang mundo? Sa when we start to come together, when we start to carry each other's burden, when we start to comfort one another, when we start to depend and rely on Christ more, then, then and only then, is the anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ, real in our lives. And therefore, people will say, that is the Christ I want to have the Christ that is in that person. So when we look at this passage, in the midst of death, we can start to share life. Life that is from Jesus. We give now a sense of hope because in the midst of darkness, even the gates of Hades shall not prevail because he has risen. He has overcome. He is the God who is king, whose kingdom is not established in a place, not in the things that we possess, but he is enthroned in the hearts of each one who believes. And it is also during the time when we feel like, here it is, we're sold off, and yet Jesus is saying, it is only through the crown of thorns and the cross that I may be able to establish. Yes, it is only at times when we go through difficulties and suffering that we start to depend more and realize, God, I have nothing. Maybe as I start to share my life, people will reject me. Maybe as I go through the storms of life, I have no work. That's the time when I see that you are truly God. This morning, ask God, Ask the Lord, Jesus, I want you to renew 
that kind of confidence in me as I entrust my life to you again. I'm sorry, Lord, I'm mistaken. Sorry, Lord, I, I'm so arrogant, but I felt, you know, I can do it on my own. No, I need my brothers. We need each other. We have to carry each other's load. We have to comfort one another. For when one is weak, I have to be there for that person. When somebody has fallen, I will not laugh. But on the, on, on the contrary, as he has fallen, I too may fall. And you have helped me in the past, so let me help that brother. So that together, we can journey together, walk together, to receive the crown of blessing. Today, the kingdom of God is established. Can you imagine? Jesus is still being preached through the airwaves. No storm can stop this message because the Holy Spirit brings it to our ears and to our hearts. So now let's just commit everything to you. Let's commit everything to Christ. The storm, the COVID, the plight, the dilemmas of our lives. And say, Jesus, you are the Christ. Be strong in my life. Dear God, I don't know what my brothers and sisters are going through. Our brothers and sisters, whom we don't even know, but you know so well, who have been devastated in Catanduanes. Oh, dear God, this prayer seems to be so trivial that we just say it. But Lord, we have it with meaning and really intent. God, we need to touch them. We need to take care of them. Yung mga, Lord, the salanta, mga bahay, walang tirahan, hiniginaw, walang damit, linaklap ang kanilang bubong, walang walang bahay, Lord. Ang kanilang mga halaman, kanilang mga mga alaga na matay, nakawalaw. Lord, can you just be there for them? Can you be with the people in Sosu? Can you be with the people, Lord, or in the Southern Tagalog who are experiencing so much pain? Jesus, have mercy on Take care of my our brothers and sisters. And take care of us, Lord. The times we are so selfish, we only think of ourselves rather than glorifying you. So God, we say to you now, Jesus, you are the anointed, you are the Messiah, you enthroned in my heart and nowhere else. I thank you, God, for this moment that you received our prayers in me. Amen. God bless you and may God protect you from your heart. And I would like to say thank you so much for the volunteers, AJ, Miriam, and everyone, the praise and worship of the staff. May Jesus protect you and take care of you. Thank you so much, Lord, that you're most glorified through their service and their love. Thank you for Ron, who's taking care of this video. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name. God bless you. The Lord bless you.
Hallelujah. What a blessed day and blessed morning that we have. You know, Pastor Gus earlier said, suffering is a time to witness God's grace at work. And as he said that, uh, I was reminded of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. And it says, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Church, that is my prayer for each one of us, that we would embrace all the challenges that we are facing and that we are going to face, all the suffering that we are going to face and that and currently facing. Embrace them because after a little while, God will make us steadfast, firm, and strong. Thank you, Lord, that we have challenges in life because as you work through challenges, you are making us more and more like your son, Jesus Christ. You have always purposed, Lord, that your children will become like him. Father, we thank you that your blessing upon us isn't just for us, but we are meant to carry each other's burdens. And so, Lord, the blessing that we get from you, uh, help us, Lord, to... Just usher them and store them well that we may give it to others who are in need. Lord, we pray. We pray, dear God, that you would make us the church that you have designed, that you have always purposed for us to be. A church that would be your hands, that would be your feet, that would truly be your body, that the world may see our good works and glorify you, our Father in heaven. Be lifted up, Jesus. Be lifted up. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace now and forever. Amen and amen.